Wherefore, part three. Virtuous vice runs from a small industrial unit. They use a lot of dates, raw cacao and manuka honey. Caroline considers herself to be the virtuous employee while Elizabeth handles the vice. Today, Elizabeth has handled the vice so thoroughly that she has not even turned up. There will be a karmic debt for this, Caroline is certain. She has every reason to be certain as she is underway deciding the exact form this karmic debt should take. It is on her mind to save up a few of these debts so that karma can take the form of a spa day. Elizabeth owns the company. She can afford it. Who was it? Caroline asks, because the reasons for her employer's absences tend to have names. Found him in my garden, Elizabeth replies. This suggests something too complicated to deal with by phone while organising boxes of virtue-laden sweets for delivery. She texts back, I expect you to tell me everything, and gets to work. Curled up on his sofa, and still groggy from having been up all night, Elizabeth decides that she will just lie about her experiences. She can tell Caroline that the young man had broken in and she caught him trying to get into the shed. She will say that as he looked both cute and desperate, she lured him with her many seductive charms. There will be an exchange about the dangers of letting a thief into the house and Elizabeth will say, well, obviously I did him on the lawn and sent him packing. Caroline will be suitably scandalised, which is clearly how she wants to feel. And that will be that, at least for now. The truth of her late night activities is far more peculiar. At this point, she does not quite know what to think about it. There had indeed been a young man in her garden, only nothing suggested he had broken anything to get in. He had not been trying to force the shed door open. Instead, she had found him cupping water from her nature pond and slurping it. He was also entirely naked. For a while, she stood at the back door and stared at him in wonder. At some point, he felt her scrutiny and looked up. She thinks about that moment and shivers. The intensity of him. His alarm. He jumped up from the pond, touching his own face, staring at her, then doing a little circle dance on the lawn as they're looking for a way out. His fear calmed her, casting her as the sensible older woman who would have to take control of the situation. Are you OK? she called out. His response came as a throaty, animal sort of cry. She watched him a little longer, then went back inside to retrieve a blanket. That blanket now sat around her own shoulders. It smells musky with a sort of man-animal combination that manages to be sexy and slightly unpleasant at the same time. She needs the smell of him because it keeps the previous night real, stops her brain from refusing to accept events in all their outrageous glory. When she took him the blanket, he backed away nervously. Cornered in her small garden, he bared his teeth and growled a bit, but when she wasn't put off by this, he became docile and cooperative. She wrapped the blanket around him. It spoiled the charming view somewhat, but the night was chilly and she could see him shivering. With a little persuasion, she got him to sit on the garden bench with her. After a few moments of stillness, he covered her hand with his. He seemed to be comparing the two for shape and function and she did nothing to resist it. The man-animal, sexy, slightly unpleasant smell filled her nostrils. Looking back now, she wonders how she was able to be so calm at the time. He turned and nuzzled her neck. In any kind of normal situation, Elizabeth would have read this as an overtly sexual move. She remembers how he nuzzled her hair, sniffing at her, then rested his cheek against hers for a little while before licking her face. Then he pulled back slightly and just stared at her, puzzled, clearly trying to figure something out. She supposes she must have looked just as confused. At the time, it made no sense at all. With hindsight, his actions sit in a different context. Unfortunately, that context seems a bit crazy and is at odds with how she previously thought the world worked. She knows, deep in her body, that he was simply expressing himself to her, one mammal to another. She knows that his own body was confusing him. 
It was there on his face the whole time, but she didn't know how to interpret it then. They just sat together and watched the full moon curve her way across the sky, flirting with clouds as she went. None of it made any sense. Not until the first cautious fingers of pre-dawn light stroked their way over the hill. He had melted then, shimmered and shivered for a few seconds with pure shock written across his face. Then a scrabble, an ungainly dismount from the bench, an awkward tangled roll in the blanket and away he went across the lawn. His furry bum caught the light of the rising sun before he disappeared under the hedge, going through the hole of the badger's always used for visiting her garden. She breathes in, breathes the peculiar scent of him from the blanket and thinks about the sensation of his skin brushing over hers. Elizabeth has a particularly tactile memory. She can remember the body shapes, the skin textures and temperatures of everyone she has ever gone to bed with. The sensation of him stands out not simply because it is the most recent. Of course he had been unable to answer her questions. How could he tell her his name or explain how he got there or why he was naked? By the looks of things, he'd never been a human before in his life and had no idea how to do much as a human. Clearly, to this point, he had simply been a badger. It hurts her head to think about this. It hurts her body, too, with a deep, raw sort of ache from the top of her ribs down into her digestive system. What does this feeling mean? What sense are her guts making of all this? He is a young badger. She guesses he was probably born last spring. By badger standards, this makes him a late teen from what she's seen of them. He is very young, unworldly, not at all used to being human. Elizabeth considers herself to be a bit of a cougar. She generally prefers the younger folks with their charming balances of lust and inexperience, leading them astray, educating and corrupting them, has been her life's work. As the distance in years between her and her preferred playmates has broadened, she's felt no guilt or discomfort, and anyway, she has never chased anyone. They come to her, doe eyes and pouty-mouthed and keen to be relieved of all semblance of virginity. So why does she now feel so awkward? Is it because the lad is also not a lad? She has felt zero interest in bestiality over the years. She has seen him both as a badger and as a man. As a man, she finds him to be rather desirable. As a badger, she finds him to be a badger. Where should she go with this? What does she want? What are the implications? Elizabeth decides that at the next full moon she will arrange a picnic in the garden. What do badgers in human form like to eat? She supposes fruit would be a safe bet if the way they ship plum stones and rowan pips on her lawn is anything to go by. She will put together a picnic and bring a lot of blankets, sit out and see what happens. Let nature take its course. What supernature? It might be the most depraved thing she has ever done, and the thought cheers her greatly. Badger boy is as figured out as he can be for now. This just leaves her the problem of the guys next door. She'd seen them through the hedge, Philip and Simon, a middle-aged couple who'd been her neighbours for years. Both of them were naked and up to their knees in dirt, stood in the flower beds and apparently asleep. They both had beatific expressions on their faces as the rising sun made their skin seem to glow. She saw signs of them both waking and hurried away, too overwhelmed by her own experience to want any part of theirs. What were they doing? From the kitchen, she'd heard the tones of their confused voices, but not the exact words of their conversation. She had the impression they'd been surprised to wake up like that. <laughs> Apparently full moons made everyone crazy. She'd texted Caroline for rescue on the work front and then gone to bed. 
It might have all seemed like a dream without the affirmation of the man badger scent on her blanket. Still sexy. Still slightly unpleasant. Next time, she tells herself.